Hey guys, it's Brant and I'm back within my head channel and I'm back with Emily Graziano who was in a video with me before if you've not seen it. She's in a video where she showed off all of her mom's cool stuff and if you've not seen that video you definitely need to go back and check it out. But this is kind of part two of that video. This time we have her mother with us, Sandy Graziano, who all this stuff belongs to and she's been kind enough to um, allow Emily to pull it out of the crawl space and to show it off. So this is going to be an awesome video, guys. If you haven't seen the first video, you definitely need to go back and check that out. But check this video out as well. Um, Emily and Sandy, it's just awesome to have you guys. Um, so how are y'all doing today? Good. We're excited. My mom is generously um, appeared on camera. So for who was it asking? Um, Les Wadley, you were you wanted to see my mom on camera, so this is not only for you, but for everyone else who wanted to see her. She loves being part of the Kiss Army. She's been there since the 70s, so that is really cool. But she's an original fan, so I think that's yeah. really cool. A fellow original fan right here, fellow original fan since 77. I was eight years old, so I wish I'd have came in a little earlier, but I was just a little bit too young. Uh, but I came in at a good time. I came in at a live too. So I came in at a good time. Um, so Sandy, your your collection is quite impressive. I was really impressed by uh, what you had, what she showed in the first one. And it really brought back a lot of my um, just being a kid. When she pulled out your grooves, number seven, it inspired me to get on eBay and buy my own. And I, I made a video about this. I've not had this. I've not had this. Uh, I think mine actually got stolen out of storage when I was in my early 20s, about 21 or 22. So I've not actually touched one of these in over 30 years. And wow. so it was just amazing. I actually cried off camera when I was looking at it. Uh, after I did my video, I was looking through it and reading and I actually was tearing up and crying over it. But um, just your video inspired me to go really tracked down some of the magazines that was near and dear to me when I was a kid. So I do want to thank you for that. Um, and I want to thank you for just allowing us back in your house and back in your collection. And um, uh, so do you want to, do you feel, I don't know what you want. I want you to be comfortable, but do you want to share a little bit about your story as a KISS fan? When you came in, what your favorite eras are, maybe a favorite member, think I know who that is without even asking uh, and and before and then I know you've got your collection laid out behind you you kind of showed me that before we started really filming awesome. and I, since you worked hard on that we want you to take the time to show that and we would like for you then to pull up some pieces that you want to talk about but do you feel like sharing any of your personal story well I, I remember being a KISS fan I was born in 1965 and I remember from the time I first heard them, I saw a video of their first concert they showed when Gene had the, his ponytail was really high and they were at, oh, what's that? I don't remember the, what the place was called. The very first place they played at. The Popcorn Club? I think so. I well, saw as, as the very first place they ever played when they were kind of starting was Popcorn. But once they actually got signed, the first place they played was they played in Edmonton, Canada. Well, it was just, I just remember seeing a video and it was really old. I mean, it was when they first started and I heard the songs. It's like, okay, I like this, even though I was young. Mm -hmm. And then my mom ran a campground. She was a manager of a campground for years. And there was a jute, a jukebox, 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 and they had Kiss songs on there. And my mom kind of started me into Kiss because my mom was major rock and roll. She would have been 95 this year. Oh, wow. And she... Was a mate. She was rock and roll, just like <laughs> me. And mom and I would be at the campground, and there would they would have numerous Kiss songs on the jukebox, and we would, when nobody was there, we would go in the game room and we would put quarters in and we would dance to Kiss, <laughs> and we would That's sing. The stuff that true Kiss fans yeah. stories. That's what fellow army members love to hear. They love mm -hmm. those stories. Yeah, I remember. I remember playing. I remember the arcade that was in front of my house that I talked about in my going home video. They had a Kiss pinball machine in it, and I remember playing Kiss songs on the jukebox while playing the Kiss pinball machine. And I just thought I was just, 
I just thought I was it because I was playing Kiss Ball Machine, Pinball Machine, listening to Kiss music. So yeah, that was, cool. that, that was, was cool. awesome. That was awesome times. Yes, yes, it was. Um, I think the show, if you're if you're thinking about the one I think about, um, it's black and white. I think that might have been from Coventry. Coventry, um, yes. Yeah, come from Coventry. Yeah, and I, yeah. that's an awesome, awesome uh, video. It really is. So, how old were you? What do you remember, like from the very beginning, like seventy four? So you were been around nine. Nine. Sort of, sort of. I I remember seeing them and and hearing videos and. Then I don't remember what the first album I even got was. Hmm. I don't even remember anymore. There's yeah. a lot of stuff I don't remember. Yeah. I'm 50, 55. <laughs> I'm kind of forgetting things. Yeah. But I just remember loving Kiss, loving the music. I remember just the band with the makeup. Every It was just cool. They came out. They wore makeup. Mm -hmm. And I have always had a soft spot for drummers. Mm -hmm. I've always loved drummers. So I love Peter Chris, But Paul Stanley is was my favorite. I had a major crush on him when I was early teens. Mm -hmm. But then when Eric, when Peter left, I cried because I, I thought Kiss that. was going to end. I thought, Oh no, it's my favorite band. But when Eric Carr came in, Eric is my favorite. You knew yeah. everything he was going to be okay. He was this cute little short Italian drummer who used to fix stoves mm -hmm. or ovens and he could beat, those drums harder, I think, than anybody. Mm -hmm. And the, he, I, yeah, that's he was my second major crush. <laughs> yeah, I, and it, it really was. I think one of the things that I really feel envious for modern day Kiss fans. I, well, one, I'm just happy that Kiss is still around in in whatever form they still are. I know I give them a lot of flack, and I catch a lot of flack for it. But I just appreciate that Kiss is still around. Um, but one of the things I really feel in, uh, feel sad for people that came in after us is they didn't get to experience what it was really like, kiss pre-internet, before they took their makeup off, before you knew what they looked like without makeup. And, you know, you had to, to see them, you had to either catch them on television, there weren't VCRs, so you had to catch them on television, or you had to see them in a magazine. And I heard somebody say that they think that kiss was one of the most photographed bands of all time. And I do believe that because you see so many photographs of Kiss, but that's really what Kiss was. Is Kiss was about the image, and they were about the show. And it really was a different and special time. They were larger than life. They were superheroes. They were a little mysterious and dangerous in the beginning. When I came in, I missed a little bit of that mysteriousness and danger, although Gene's solo album did scare the crap out of me. Um, but they... I really do feel sad for fans that didn't get to experience any of that time from 70 uh, from 74 to you know 80 80 before you know 79 80 before the original band was kind of starting to dismantle mm -hmm. uh, cuz it really was there is no time I think back and I I look back at those magazines and I go back to being an 8 9 10 year old 11 year old kid again and there really wasn't a, a time like that. And, and even with Creatures and Lick It Up and Animalize and stuff that goes through the 80s, they were still Kiss, but it was different. Bringing on with when Eric and then Vinny and then Mark and then Bruce. Uh, it was different. They were still Kiss, but it was different. Especially once they took the makeup off. A lot of the magic was gone. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and a lot of the, the mystery was gone. And even when they put it back on... Uh, it's now more nostalgia, like, you know, they're like a nostalgic act, which, like I said, that's not a slight, but, um, yeah, so I, I feel you, I feel you being a KISS fan during that time, a member of the original KISS Army, and, uh, it was a great time, it really was, it really was a great time. I'll keep it back up. <laughs> uh, oh, no, the whole uh, thing was Yeah, me. so, so, go ahead, go ahead and tell, finish your story, and then we want to see some of this collection. Keep it back up. The whole thing with the makeup, too, with all the pictures of them, everybody was trying to catch them without the makeup mm -hmm. because you wanted to see what these guys look like. So that was the magic of it. Mm -hmm. Like when you said when they took it off, it kind of – and then when Peter left, it, they weren't original anymore. Right. And the original to me, I love the band. I've always loved the band. But the original, the four, were it for me. But I do – but Eric Carr, I still love Eric yeah. Carr. But. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do too. I do too. 
I've liked all eras of Kiss. There's ones I definitely like more than others, but mm-hmm. I like all eras. And just to show that I'm just not strictly an original fanboy, one of my favorite eras of Kiss is the one, a uh, non makeup from the Revenge Carnival Souls era, the Eric Singer, Bruce Kulick, Gene and Paul. Love that era. I love those two albums, and I love that era. To me, that is just before the reunion. It's when Kiss was actually st- finally starting to be a legit heavy metal rock and roll band rather than and kind of finding themselves again. Even though some people was like, oh, well, they were trying to be Alice in Chains or trying to be... Well, everybody was trying to sound like Alice in Chains and Pearl Jam and Soundgarden during that time. But I think Kiss did a very good job at it. Uh, Carnival of Souls is one of my... It's in my top three favorite Kiss albums. So, um, but I, yeah, I'm not just an original fanboy. I like all eras, different, different ones more than others. So you worked so hard on putting this collection out. So I want you to take some time to move the camera around, start at one side and kind of go through and I can hear you while you're doing it. So you can kind of just talk about things in particular and then set the camera back up and let's pull some things up and show some things off in greater detail. How's that sound? That sounds perfect. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is my, this is my um, Kiss Alive figures mm-hmm. with the four originals, and then I've got it. Creatures can... of the if Night with Eric Carr because I had to have Eric with his drum set, and then I've got. I can't even see what's showing. Um, it's showing. I... It's showing. Oh. I can see the Kiss. I can see what's in your okay. hand. Yep. Okay. My Eric Carr figure. Mm-hmm. Can you see him? Okay. Mm-hmm. My Eric Carr figure. Then I've got the box sets. I've got two separate come, ones. Come down a little bit. I got it. You can okay, take you got it. Yeah. Okay. So, and then, oh, here. This is for can Dark you see? Light. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is for Dark Light, who mentioned. She fixed his head. <laughs> and I glued his head back on, so his head's not going to fall off again. <laughs> That's and cool. And then I, I'm going to, this when it came out, Kiss Meets the Phantom, I have it on VHS. I taped it off the TV. Oh, wow. I'm going to have this transferred to DVD or Blu-ray, whatever Shout I can get Rick. done. That's yeah, his favorite yeah. movie. Oh, Rick, I'm going to have it. This is the original that came out that was on the TV when I was younger that I was glued to the TV set. Commercials and all? Pro- prob- yeah, probably. If it I has commercials, I- that would be amazing. As commercials, I want a copy of that because okay. that would be amazing. I'd love, I love seeing, I'd love to see the commercial, the, the the retro commercials from that time. Well, if I'm gonna have it transferred, I'll watch it, and if it has commercials, I will send you a copy. Awesome, awesome. And then these are all my. I've got the second. I, I don't know if you can see the second coming. These are all VHS tapes here that I've got. Paul solo tour. That's a bootleg, right, right there. Probably. And then I've got the Eric Carr. Come down on the camera a little bit more. There you go. There you go. All right. I can see now. I got Crazy Nights, then the Eric Carr story, the Tale of the Fox. Um, Unplugged. I love that. And then my DVDs, I've got. Kiss all Exposed. Of the- yes. I want to get that on VHS. That's one of the. Th- I've got Kiss Extreme beside it. I've got Extreme beside it, but I want to get Exposed there. And, and I've got Kiss Confidential. But okay. I. Yeah, but I want to get exposed again. That'd be awesome. That one, I well, yeah, well, Eric's in that one too. Mm-hmm. Um, That's in the. It's on DVD with the gold. I think. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah then I've got the Kiss Symphony, and then I. It's yeah. If you get it's if on, you get this, that the DVD is included in the Kiss Gold. Okay. All right. All right. Come on down so I can see that bottom row. What we got on there? That's Kissologies. Yeah, all three. All three. Uh huh. And then Rock the Nation. Um, and then I found that 20th Century Masters thing at a um, disc replay, for, and I got I bought it for my mom for Easter. Okay, and then Kiss Gold. And then can you? These are her pile oh, of shirts. This is. Can you see all my pile of shirts? Yes. I've got I've got the Halloween one. I've got Merry Christmas. I've got yeah. I kind of went crazy with my Kiss shirts. A lot from the reunion tour. And I've no, got, not the reunion tour. The farewell tour. And farewell I've got my jack, my Kiss jacket. And then, can you go up and with the... Yeah. And then here's my books. I got the Eric Carr story, of course. I've got A World Without Heroes. The Rick, one... that is the backstory about the talisman from Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park. It's like a backstory about how Kiss was chosen for the talisman. It's a fan story, but it got published. And all proceeds went to the Eric Carr Memorial 
wing in a was in a hospital in Wisconsin for like a kids children. That's um, really cool. Uh, yeah. So, I just yeah. Every time I saw a different Kiss book, I'd have to get them. And then I've got Jean's book. Paul's book, I think I loaned it to a friend and I didn't get it back. I'm going to rebuy it for her. And then I have, oh, then go up. Show this is a poster. freaking cool mural. That is cool. It is so cool. It was a pain in the butt to put up and we're so lucky that it's staying it kept up. On, it kept on falling on me. <laughs> and then I've got the Kiss Immortals. Come down a little bit. Come down low. Okay. The Kiss the Myrtles DVD game. I've got Kissopoly, of course. Then I've got the Kiss Pinball That's for the computer. Mm -hmm. And then I've got the Kiss Psycho Circus. The Nightmare Child. The Nightmare Child oh, game wow. for the computer. And everything original is in it still. Oh, wow. And then I've got the Kiss Trivia game. And then come this way. Um, oh, here, go down. Oh, these are more magazines that I didn't show in the first the video. Stri I got Strike All Magazines. And then the farewell photo album. Come from... down a little more, Ian. There you go. And then I got the clown ones. Of course, half of Matt Paul on there. <laughs> and then the Kiss magazine. And then I got Psycho Circus. And then it has a collector's comic book of the Elder. Oh, wow. So those are my magazines. That I didn't show. That <laughs> Emily didn't show last time. Yeah, and then here. And then can you, can you see? I've got calendar or trivia calendar from 2001 i got some other magazine calendars the 77 tour book i got the yeah i got a oh 77. wow now you got to show the 77 tour book off in a little bit okay yeah and then i got just some pictures when i went to a kiss a kiss fest mm -hmm. i just bought some pictures with of course eric is in them and then this nice pick of eric pick of eric and then she has the, um, the four, yeah, the original, the four our guy, our four guys, <laughs> and then I've got my book from when I went. Oh yeah. And then I, my kiss watches. Mhm. Mm and then I have both sets, the collectors cards. I have series one and two. And then for some reason I bought a little tiny plate <laughs> with kiss on the little tiny plate. And then my keychain. And this is when I went to Kiss Fest. Oh, that's cool. In 2001. And this, I forgot I even had this. This is a Kiss Psycho Circus magazine. Well, no, it's a comic. A comic. Or a comic. Uh -huh. And then I've got a couple of Eric Carr guitar picks. And just a couple of pins with Eric on them. And I don't know where I got this. It's a patch from Dress to Kill. And this is just air car merchandise. And a postcard. And a postcard. And there's some postcards. And then this was a Apollo. Can you see? Mm -hmm. This was a Apollo I had that I had and downstairs I with me. And then I finally, the Apollo got kind of gross. So I just cut the picture off the front of it. Yeah. That picture right there is the first picture I saw of the guys without makeup. And I was so confused. <laughs> I, get, I was so confused. Emily didn't get it because they it wasn't kissed to her. Yeah. And then my friend went to Myrtle Beach it to the coffee house and got me the mug. And then my sister-in-law went and then she just got me the empty, cups. the empty cups mm -hmm. from the coffee house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I and, remember, I remember the coffee house from Myrtle beach. I live about four hours from there. Oh, yeah. and then that's, that's other than the magazines Emily showed. Is that good? That's good. Okay. And other than the magazines Emily showed, that's my stuff. Awesome. Awesome. So, so I definitely want to see the the tour book uh, from. But and anything else you guys want to pick up and show in detail, um, I'd really appreciate it. I'm sure the fans would appreciate it. But yeah, that look how big that is. That's just amazing. They don't make things like that anymore. Okay, so I'm gonna. Yes. You hold that side. Okay. Okay. So yeah. can you see? Yes. It's really skinny compared to the other one I got. Yeah. One from 2000. Yeah. Just... Oh, Ace, why are you so cool, Ace? <laughs> That's why Paul and Gene don't like him, because Ace is the coolest member of the band. <laughs> oh, he is. He was so good, and we went to the Arcada and saw him, and the seats were great. He was so good. He mm -hmm. was so funny. He's just got, he's just got so much swagger. 
Ace is just yeah. And yeah. he came out and um uh people started cheering like ah and screaming and he's like I haven't done anything yet. <laughs> He should be yelled and screamed for just what he did in the five years between 74 and 79. <laughs> yeah. Picture of Peter. Yeah. That's yeah. And I always loved that picture of Peter, the one that's there on the right side, shows his drum set. Because I'm like a drum, a drum set junkie. And I was so envious of that Alive 2 drum set. And I love that picture of Ace. That's, that's to me, is one of the most iconic pictures of Ace. Of oh, this, yeah. Yeah. And this one, and then flip it back towards you. I love Ace in the in the Love Gun outfit. He just I know. he just looks so amazing in it. Jean. Oh, Paul and Jean. Paul and Jean. Wait, you're. I think you're too high, honey. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yep. Is that better. That's, okay. Yep, that's good. And then there's one more page. Yeah. Oh, Peter singing Bath. Peter singing Bath. Bath. Yep. Ace. And I threw I in threw in that destroyer shot of Ace. That's weird how Kiss do that sometimes. Sometimes they they get a little time timeline out and i love how kiss always showed their albums and i love the, the japanese photo shoot that's always oh, been one of my favorites yeah that's really awesome so that's the 77 78 and then i don't know how she has it <laughs> and then the when i went in 2000 2000 yes it's just it's so much thicker and there's so much more so this I think it's just all the dates that they play. Yeah, here, hold that. And I love how they got the cutout of the word "kiss" on the yes. front. That's cool. Hold, open it. You can open it now. It doesn't bother me. Oh. oh yeah, this they just t kind oh. of took took steps back and showed the the history of the band. Yeah. Old and photos. He doesn't have his full makeup on yet. Yes. Just his eyes. Just yeah. I love this picture. Mm -hmm. That one I've always liked. Mm -hmm. I've always liked older pictures of Kiss where Paul still had the bandit makeup. I think this coming Halloween, I'm going to do Eric's makeup, but I think I'm going to do Paul. I'm going to do Eric and Vinny's makeup mm -hmm. in October. Um, but I think I'm going to do Paul's bandit makeup too. Ooh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, just... no, you're in... This will be put out where you can see all this, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> Anything Eric Carr, my mom loves. Well, I have an Eric Carr shirt on, but I'm too short. You really can't see it. <laughs> this is just all their toys. That picture I like, too. Yes, I had that big poster of the, the Spirit of 76. That was awesome. I remember I had a poster of Paul on the back of my bedroom door when I was... Probably the solo album poster. I probably... No, it wasn't... It was... It was. It could have been. I don't... Emily, I'm getting old. I don't remember. But it was on the back of my bedroom door... And my bed was like kitty corner in a corner. And I woke up in the middle of the night and it was like a full, like a, it looked like it, he was on my back of my door. I thought somebody was in my room mm -hmm. and I yanked the blankets over my head because it scared me. Then it dawned on me. It was my Paul Stanley poster. <laughs> <laughs> I felt really stupid after I did that. That's awesome. Yeah, so this was from when I went in 2001. I don't. I went twice in 2001. In 2000. In 2000. 2000. According to the scrapbook. The center. The center. The center. Uh, the centerfold there, or the poster. I don't know if it's the centerfold, but the poster, the photo you just passed is one of the greatest pictures of all time. No, the alive too. Yeah, that's oh, yeah, just, that, that's like, yeah. that's one of the great. I used to have that. I used to have that. It was a wall poster. It was. Imagine the size of a normal poster times four. It would cover wow. it would and I had that in a wall poster. Oh, yeah, it was wow. crazy. Yeah, and I love that I love that dynasty photo there. I love the dynasty costumes. They're probably I my did. second favorite. Me too. I loved I and oh and the other day with Shandy. I was right we were, I was talking to you as you were doing yeah, Shandy's my absolute favorite song from yeah. that album. From from Unmask. Yes. So yeah, this book's a lot. Oh, see, this is what I like too. Is they have Vinny's here and Eric. Mm -hmm. Well, this is back when they used to acknowledge everybody, and now um, they don't acknowledge everybody. I think I think you're gonna hear. I think you're gonna see some acknowledging once it comes October and September, and the tour wraps up, and they start getting ready for that last that last date in 2021. There'll be some acknowledging coming because there'll be a day. There'll be a, in that last show. It'll shock me if it's just those four members. I I see I see Vinny coming back 
for at least a song or two. I see Eric, I see, I'm not Eric, but uh, I see Ace and Peter coming back for a song or two and Bruce coming back. It'll shock me if they don't do it. I hope they do because that's their kiss too. I mean, yeah. so this just keeps on going, which I. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, they're just, they're basically working their way up through all the eras, which is really cool. It's some revenge era stuff there and. Gene with his goatee and Paul with his stubble. Blondie Eric. Blondie Eric. The better Eric. The better Eric singer. Rather than the short, short haired and the unplugged era. They need to wear the Peter wig. Yeah. I don't really like what they do, but I mean, I understand that it's easier than dyeing his hair, but I mean, it just shows you how much of a yes man Tommy is because he does uh. this. Well, I think Gene, I think Paul Paul definitely wears a wig when he's on stage. You see him you see him when he's not on stage. His hair is not even as long as it is when he's on stage. I think he wears a wig. Do you maybe a wig or maybe they put extensions maybe in? Maybe extensions, maybe. They do something. Well, I that I uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Everybody I'm thinks like, everybody thinks I hate Paul. I don't. I just I'm just hypercritical of him sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. There's the man. Well, I mean, I like I said when I replied, Peter I'm not paying that. to see him lip sync. All right. I'm paying for the show. Yes. Well, yeah. And I, and a lot of people are like, well, it's a show. It's a show. And I'm like, yeah. And if you want, and if you want that, if that's what you want, yes, it is a show. And it's a nostalgia show. And it's if you know based on what they're doing and based on the songs they're playing. It's a nostalgia show, and if that's what you want, it's your money. I'm not going to tell you how to spend your money, you know. Exactly. What else do you want to show, Emily? Kiss off, Emily. Basic. Okay, here. This. Whatever you guys want to show. This used to scare Emily when she it was did, little. It did. Oh, the Psycho Circus. Yeah. Yeah. I would play it on my computer, and she would tear upstairs because she was afraid of it. So, but everything that it came with, I still have. It's all completely. Intact. This she died in the game. Well, I died I all the time in this, the game. I mentioned this in the little video I made where I where I talked about it. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Um, I she died in the game, and I'm like, are you dead in real life too? <laughs> I, I don't know why. You I were little. That. <laughs> it's a dark game. It's a it's a dark. It's a it's the a. The animation is creepy, but mm -hmm. it, I think today the animation will look hokey just because it's been tw it came out in 2000 and. Mm -hmm. But I think the narration would still be creepy. Well, I'm still, I still want to play it. I'm just going to try yeah. to play it again. This is, this is the only version of the Psycho Circus game that I have. It's just this little... That's yeah, oh, the, the little... The little... Yeah, just the little blister. The little blister pack is the only only thing that I have. But um, I, hang, I have never... Here's a, here's a fact. I've never played this game because by the time I actually got this game... A couple years ago, my daughter bought it for me. I didn't have a PC old enough to play it. You have to play this PC, this game on older PCs. So oh. I, so I actually built an older XP PC to be able to play this game. So, so yeah. I, so I probably can't play it. Then. If you try to play this on a Windows 10 PC, it will not work. It's too, oh. it's too old. Yeah. Well, this it came with this too, and it autographed with their autographed. That's cool. That was a limited, like if you bought it the, within the first, what, 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 thousand pressings or something? Yeah. Like that. I, remember, I don't remember yeah. buying the thing. I'm like, I know I did, but I don't remember. Yeah, that's really cool, though. That's awesome. So, then I got the pinball game, too. That probably is the same thing. Where so, I, I, prob yeah, I probably can't play this either on my computer, could I? Probably, if it came out around the same time, probably not. It did. Yeah. It did. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm just going to keep them. It's, keep them and it's just not play them. merchandise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, everything back there, everything back there ha behind you has a value. Some things more than others. Honestly, and it, it, sometimes it's things you wouldn't even think about. Like I don't know, but like promotional stuff has a tendency to be really expensive. Like the promotional poster you've got back there for the kiss the kiss box set. That mm -hmm. thing might be worth more than the box set itself is. Because I bought my I oh. bought my box set for like forty bucks, and I've had some people tell me that I paid too much for it. Um, but that poster back there, it, it, since it's a promotional thing and there was only so many made, and most of them were probably took down and destroyed, 
um, any type of promotional stuff or po promotional posters or stuff like that, they have a tendency to be uh, worth a lot because there's just not a lot of them. Don't get rid of it. Uh, I'm not getting rid of it. No. I'm t no. I, yeah. This is my, that, no, I'm not getting rid of anything. Yeah. And then I'm not, what, I mean, I'm not sure what else. Whatever you guys want to show. If you want to show some VHS tapes or if you want to show any, this is your segment, whatever you guys want to show off. I know this is, this Emily wanted to show for Rick. Mm -hmm. It's a backstory about the talisman that a fan, um, Dale Sherman, created. It's from the author of that Black Diamond uh, uh, biography. And it's numbered. I guess it's... Oh, it's that's cool. And then it came with... A bookmark. A book, oh, yeah, it's a weird-looking bookmark, but it's a weird-looking bookmark. Um, the premise is it's based Wait. off the Elder and... Oh. And it's got a disc, too. Oh, okay. It's based off the concepts of the Elder and Kiss Meets Phantom of the Park... As truth and fiction collide, as we revisit the van from their early days on the streets of New York to their fictional encounters with the magical talisman in an all-true-to-life timeline of events. And it has um, illustrations in here. Like, it shows Ace on Jendel. Um, here's a picture of the talisman in the box. Thought that was pretty cool. Um, Where's the picture of Ace? That'd be cool I'm to see. I'm going to show that, too. Yeah, here's Ace on Jendel. <laughs> yeah. So that's awesome. It is. And he's in his dynasty outfit. What else? Good. Well, we talked about the Phantom, which oh, is... Oh, I can talk about this. Um, Go ahead and show Okay, it. so this, the Kiss Rocks the Nation, I was about... This came out in, what, 2005, I think? The video came out in 2005, so I was, like, eight or nine. And I remember... Um, the fact that Tommy Thayer is there, every time they would pan over to Tommy Thayer, I would have to tell my mom, that's not Ace. Remember, that's not Ace. Remember, that's Tommy. Oh, look, it's Tommy and not Ace. Look, he's wearing his costume. And to the point where she had to tell me to shut up and just watch. But for some reason, I was obsessed with the fact Ace wasn't there. Like, I knew Peter wasn't there. And I mentioned that a couple times, but I the focus was on Tommy as Ace. And I, I just didn't like it. I'm like, how can we enjoy this? This isn't authentic. I can't watch it, but we just recently rewatched this, and it, it, the set list. I mean, it's kind of an envious set list. I wish that they would do now. I mean, they have um, Unholy and God Gave Rock and Roll to You, um, She, you know, Lover All I Can. So that's a very envious set list. But yeah, I was very upset to see Ace, uh, Tommy as Ace, when watching this. You, you, know, you, you know what I think? It's funny about. Um... Ace and uh, about Tommy and Eric replacing Ace and Peter. I think fans, there are some fans that upsets them for both of them. Um, but I think just because um, there are so many Ace fanboys out there and there are hands down more Ace fanboys than there are Peter fanboys, that you hear a bunch of people get upset about the fact, like you, that... Um, Tommy is wearing Ace's makeup, but not really so much about people getting upset that Eric is wearing Peter's makeup. What I hear people get upset about is when they have the segment of the show where they have um, Eric singing Beth. To me, that's sacrilegious. Okay, I'll let you slide keeping the makeup on and dressing uh, Peter uh, or dressing Eric up as Peter. That's fine, too. You own the makeup. You can do that. But to have him come out and sing the song, uh, you know, and they, when they used to have Tommy do Shock Me, I hated it. And you notice they don't have Tommy doing Shock Me, thank God, on the end of the road tour, because honestly, I think that would create a bigger upheaval than Eric singing Beth mm -hmm. as, you know, as, as Peter did. But I just think it's because people seem to be more upset that Ace is being cosplayed than they do that, that Peter is being cosplayed because Ace just has a broader fan base. You know, they, and I honestly think they could, bring, they could bring Ace back without bringing Peter back and, and bring in more older, hardcore fans. Um, not as definitely as much as if they had all four originals, but they could just bring Ace back. And and still, I'd go see him with Ace. I'm one of those people. 
I have really no interest in going seeing them in their current incarnation. But if they brought Ace back, I'd go see them. So well, with Eric as Peter, I think it's kind of sad because it kind of diminishes what Eric Singer did with Revenge and Carnival of Souls. Like people will forget that oh, he actually started doing something original with the band and now it's kind of it kind of diminishes that and that's really sad that's why i respect eric a little more than i do tommy tommy started off as their road manager cleaning gene's gutters helping paul stanley paint his house he started off as a to-do boy an errand boy and he was in a he was in a kiss cover band played ace and he kind of fell into the job but eric eric played in these bands before Kiss, and he was a legitimate non-makeup wearing member of the band. So I'm not a fan that he wears the Peter makeup. I know it's not his choice. He's just doing his job that he's getting paid for, paying very well for, and his bosses want him to wear that makeup, so he's going to wear that makeup to keep that job. I yeah. respect, but but I respect him a lot more as a member of the band because he was there to me, right now at this point, if, if Kiss cannot get Ace and Peter back, like if they wanted to keep going and they couldn't get Ace and Peter back, then put Tommy back in, in line as your tour manager, your road manager, your, your PR guy, your merchandise guy. Let Eric uh, bleach Eric's hair back out. Bring Bruce Kulick back in mm-hmm. and take up where you left off with Carnival of Souls. <laughs> yep. That, yep. 100% with you right there. You know, because this, what they're doing now, I appreciate it. I, and I don't want to sound like one of those people. And I hate saying this as I'm saying it, but this is how I feel. Except except for maybe going to the last show. Depends on even if I can get a ticket, how much they are. Because, I mean, just a trip to New York, those tickets are going to be freaking outrageous. Mm-hmm. Um, but outside of that, I've already seen my I've already seen my farewell tour. I saw it back in the early 2000s. Well, yeah, well, I've seen I've seen my farewell tour. Well, the only reason that I went back cuz I was the, I went in 2000 2000 twice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I went in May and September. Uh-huh. Emily really remembers this. She's been looking well, through I've all my been stuff. Well, I scrapbook. So, it. I Where'd went. The only reason I went back is cuz Emily wanted to go. Yeah, I I never... my mentality right now is I love Kiss, but Paul and Jean they just want to make money. They're, yeah. I love them, but yeah, the the more I mean, they were selling caskets. They were selling everything that you could imagine to sell. Mm-hmm. So I went back because Emily wanted to go. She wanted to experience it and to stand there next to her at this concert that we went to and to watch her with this ear to ear grin on her mm-hmm. face and singing the songs and dancing was worth every penny. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like I said, I'm not going to tell anybody to not go. And if you've got somebody in your family that has never seen Kiss, then by all means, take them. Take them to see it because it it still truly is a show like mm-hmm. no other. Even with all the flack I give Paul and all the flack I give Gene and Paul for having two people dressed up in the makeup at the same time, not trying to talk out of both sides of my mouth, but at the same time, me personally, I'm appreciative of it. If Paul Stanley needs backing tracks to to get him through three years of touring, then by all means do it. So everybody gets an equal show. Everybody mm-hmm. gets an opportunity or more than one opportunity if they want it. If the only if if the only way fans seeing Kiss with makeup on is to dress two guys up like two original members of the band. By all means, do it and put on a great show. That's never been my catch up with either my, my, my not catch up, literal, but, but my hang up with either one of those things has never been the fact that they do it. With my, my hang ups with both of those things is that Paul and Gene don't acknowledge that they're doing the lip syncing and using assistance, and they talked all this kind of crap for years about bands mm-hmm. that did it. Yep. That to me, it should be printed on a ticket. If you're not going to come out and say it, print on the ticket. Backing tracks or recording assistance may be used and during this during this presentation. Yep. Um, the second thing is you can have with with having two people in the band, 
and I'm not trying to get off on a rant during your thing here, but I mean, yeah. maybe somebody watch it, they'll see, because I, I, see, I see Sandy agreeing with me, and I'm just trying to talk from a fellow, two fellow, three fellow KISS fans talking, and then an old school to an old school. Mm-hmm. The thing that bothers me that I've always given Paul and Gene crap about is with the makeup on the two guys is put the makeup on them and put on your uh, put on your nostalgia performance and put on your show that's fine but do not diminish and and stop talking shit about the two guys that originated that makeup quit mm-hmm. diminishing their position and what they did to put you where you are and quit diminishing the fact that they not only helped create that makeup but they in the 70s they built the foundation and 90% of the songs that you're playing on your current tour was originated while you had those guys in the band. So quit talking shit about them and quit diminishing them. And and here's here's a little future thing. When the crap talking stops and they start becoming friendly to Ace and Peter again, public, you know, out, you know, media wise, mm-hmm. watch out because that's when they're going to come back. And because it happened already before with unmasked uh with uh with unplugged yes <laughs> so it's only a matter of time they're gonna it's only a matter of time i mean and these guys they're like family you hang around family long enough you're gonna fight with them you're gonna make up with them you're gonna have spats and you're gonna go through periods where you don't talk to them but at the end of the day they're still family and yeah. Without Ace and Peter, there would be no Kiss. They were they're all for Kiss. Mm-hmm. Now that's why I didn't have a problem when they brought in Eric Carr when Peter left because Eric had his own individual makeup, even though the Hawk was really goofy. But when they became the Fox, mm-hmm. that was different. Yeah. But and Vinny had his own individual makeup. Yes, he was the Ank. Ank is that I'm pronouncing that correctly? Ank Ank. The Ank. Ank. Yeah, I mean he that was. That was different, but the orig- the basic form of KISS and the guys, the four guys who brought KISS to where they are today are Ace, Peter, Paul, and Gene. Mm-hmm. And they they have to stop slamming them. And uh, supposedly Ace has been clean for how many years? He's Peter's been, been clean, clean for how many yeah. years? So let these guys come back and play for the last show. I think they should bring, like you said, bring everybody back that's still here. Let everybody play. Put a projection of... Mark and, and, and Eric on Mark the screen. Mark and Eric on yeah. the screen. Yeah. Because at the concert, they were showing old clips. They showed what, one or two really quick snippets of Eric. Mm-hmm. Well, Eric Carr... He when, got you through the 80s. Well, yeah, he got them through the 80s until he passed away. Give the guy more credit than the two little snippets, two little pictures. Mm-hmm. And now I'm getting on a, a ten. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I agree with you. There's there's two things that... And, and Rick... I know Rick's watching. I'm speaking to Rick right now because he's he'll nod his head and agree with me. <laughs> there is there is two there are two eras that Kiss tries to ignore. They try to ignore they try to ignore their or their roots or at least they tried to diminish Aces and Peter's roles in their roots during the seventies. And they pretty much, except for a song here and there on their set list. They don't acknowledge the '80s makeup, non-makeup years at all. Those, all those great songs that they made with Bruce and that they made with Eric. Mm-hmm. There's a couple albums out there that I don't really care for that came out during the '80s. But even those albums I don't care for had some good songs on them. And yep. and basically that was the era that kept Kiss around long enough to be re- and remain relevant enough to have the reunion. To have, and to come back around. And to be able to come back around and, mm-hmm. and take up where they, you know, and put the makeup back on and then decide to keep the makeup back on. Like, yep. to me, like I said, many times, to me, when they were done with the reunion, they should have took the makeup back off and been like, okay, let's get back to business as usual. But they knew what makeup, what, what a cash cow that the makeup and all the merchandising from the makeup, they realized what it was and what it is. And so, I mean, why make... Why make ten million when you can make a hundred million? You know, yep. so I mean, it's it's just fact of the matter is when these guys was, I had I was talking with a fan one day and they were and we we're really getting off on tangent, but I was talking with a fan one day and I was talking and I said, you know, I really wish that the, after they done the Revenge era and the Carnival of Souls, which they they weren't even going to release, um, that that they would have would have put the makeup 
they took the make book back off and went back to what they were doing. And they're like, it wasn't money feasible to do that. They're like, the revenge tour, what, they weren't even selling out. They were having to cancel dates and stuff like that. But they're like, they've not had to sell, they've not had to cancel a date since they've had the makeup back on due to due to lack of sales, which, you know, maybe that, I, I still think that's what happened in Australia. I heard that ticket sales in Australia wasn't that great, so that's why it got canceled, but who knows. But I, I it, it, at, some, at some point in time, I know it's about the money, but don't you have enough? Can't, can't it start being about the fans? And they say that this end of the road is about the fans. But me as a fan... And maybe not all fans, because me as a fan, the end of the road and the current set list and, yeah, the stage is okay, but the stage itself's plain. It's just multimedia, and they lean on that multimedia. They're leaning on multimedia so much. And to me, that's just not KISS. KISS, to me, is the freaking stacked marshals, the yellow flashing stairs, the big KISS logo in the background that's flashing, and four guys on stage busting their ass with the amps mm-hmm. turned up to 10. And and to me, that is KISS. This is just, anybody could do this. In the stage that they've got, they could put four guys in makeup, let the tape run, and they could come out there and they could pantomime it and do the exact same thing and give you the exact same show, and you'd never know the difference. And to me, KISS back in the 70s couldn't have been replaced. But KISS in the mm-hmm. tw- 2020s, can be and that's the biggest problem i have with what they're doing is they've gotten so in they've they've gotten so off course with what real and i I hate saying that because i don't want i know emily you're a real fan you are and so i don't like i don't like to diminish anybody and just say oh it's just because i i was original kiss fan i'm better than you or whatever it's nothing about that it's just a lot of these newer fans, they just don't realize just how good it was, and it's not anymore. But that's just me. That's just, and, and, and I'm gonna get a bunch of hate thrown at y'all's video. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I think, no, well, speaking of someone, I was, I can say that I was alive during the second coming, like that second coming documentary. That is my childhood. So. I, as a little kid, could not tell the difference between performances in the 90s, the late 90s, and the 70s. Like, I'd watch a VHS tape from the 70s and say, that's so cool. Then I'd see footage being broadcast on MTV or VH1 of recent concerts from, like, the Reunion or the Psycho Circus era or the Farewell Tour. And I'd be like, oh, okay, like, is this... Like, this is the same thing. This is the same thing as the 70s. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't really tell the difference. So to me, speaking as someone who was not around in the 70s or 80s, Kiss is still the original four guys because... And I don't think it's just because I I was... Kiss was the four original guys when I was little either in the reunion era. I think it's because of of just seeing... Well, you. Making it aware that the Kiss is are these four original guys and then they had other members come in who contributed to the band but Kiss is still the original yeah. four guys. Mm-hmm. And and I don't think it's coincidence that when Kiss decided to uh reform and put makeup on and recreate that magic that what what era did they go to? The Love Gun era. They went to the Alive 2 era, the costumes, the stage. Um it wasn't the exact uh, Love Gun stage. I I still think it would have been amazing if they'd have done a replication of the Love Gun stage. Um, mm-hmm. But but costume wise and the whole era wise, that's what they went back to. And my mom's gonna plug in the laptop. But okay. Well, I mean, I'm almost done. If you guys are if you guys are done done showing stuff off, I mean, I'm I'm fine with whatever. And unless you got something else you want to show off. I, I'm good. I mean, we've had a good conversation, and we've showed off some good stuff there. And um, Emily, what I what I'm going to encourage the viewers to do at this point in time is, if you see something, uh, Emily has a has her own YouTube channel, Emily Graziano. Be sure to check her channel out. Give her a subscription, and um, and if you saw anything that we showed that they showed that you would like to see more of and you'd like to see it in detail up close or whatever, just put that down in the comments and maybe Emily can collect those up and she can make a video showing that stuff off in more detail and put it on her channel. 
and yeah. you guys can go you guys can go over there and see it because I know some of this stuff she didn't want to show off on her own channel which it kind of humbled me they did she didn't want to show it off on her own channel because she wanted to save it to show it on mine um, but yeah Emily if they definitely if they if you see anything down there in the comments that somebody wants to see more of by all means make a video and put it on your channel because I want yeah. I want your channel to grow. Oh, thank you. This is a, the scrapbook that I was working on for my mom. And these were, were like loose articles that you pulled out of various magazines, but like posters and like. I collected posters, every magazine with magazines. Kiss on the cover, Circus, um, Hit Parade. Look, like, here's that Hit one parade. that I showed in oh. the first one. I put it in here because it was only like three pages. Mm -hmm. There's, I can see it. Um, but look, I put the spin magazine in here. I didn't even have to cut it because I cut the insert and I put laminate over the rest of it, so I didn't even have to cut the page. That's the spin magazine. Mm -hmm. A lot of like hip the hip parader. Parader. So yeah, I can go over this. Yeah, for yeah, sure. So yeah, you can do that on your channel, um. Yeah. yeah it's, she just made the scrapbook for me because I had all these like articles and newspaper stuff, newspaper articles. Well, here's what is this? That, see, oh, that's this is, a collector look, card. Look, here is the no. This is the, the packaging package. from the tr the kiss trading card. The pa that the package that it came in, and then on here we'll show them th like this is the newspaper oh. clipping from 2000, and that's my mom's handwriting you on the bottom. Something. I mean, that's what makes it personal. Oh, oh yes, definitely. When you write like what row? Oh, my sat tickets in. from. There's my tickets. I was going to ask if you had any tickets. So yeah, cool, oh, yeah. very cool. I say I save everything. I'm I'm uh. Oh, I even saved her the seating. The seating, yeah. I mean, come on, that's what makes it personal. Yes, that's awesome. Yeah, go, oh, that's the gold mine magazine. What just fell out? Oh uh, well, I have to. But, so you can show that on your there. channel. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay. Yeah, Emily, if 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 the fans and the viewers want to see anything, uh, uh, they're encouraged to comment it down on this, and you can go down in the comments, Emily, and look at it and interact yeah. with them as well, and. And then make a video on your own to put it on your channel. So that'd be really cool. Um, be All right. Fun. All right. You guys got anything you want to close with or, or we'll get on out of here? I don't think so. Did you tell Brent the story really quick? What story? The, just really quick. When she was two and a half. Oh, that noise. Two and a half. I had, I always played Kiss in my car. And the first song this child learned was not ABCs or Elmo. It was Rock and Roll All Night. She's <laughs> sitting in the back seat in her car seat bopping and singing Rock and Roll and Party every day. And like Detroit Rock City. And Detroit Rock City. Yeah, and Detroit Beth. Rock City and Beth. But Beth. yeah, Detroit Rock City is my absolute, that's I think my number one song of all time. I yeah, love it. I love Detroit Rock City too. It's the first Kiss song I ever heard. The first Kiss album I ever heard was Destroyer. My grandma bought it for me at a drugstore. And uh, it was the first song I ever heard. And uh, and this hands down to this day, if somebody told me you can only have one Kiss song, I wouldn't hear I, I, Detroit Rock City. That's that's the but, one I'd that's the one I'd want. If I could never hear another one ever again, just that one song, that'd be the one I'd want. To me, it, would, it is the perfect Kiss song. With Gene, with the, with the talking like he's the guy in the radio, and then the crash at the end. That's yeah. Love Gun is Love Gun and Destroyer are my favorite, my absolute favorite albums. Yeah, yeah. Those are my top two. Yeah. But I, yeah, I, hopefully we did okay. And I didn't, yeah. <laughs> Everything still, looked great. Okay. Because, yeah, I'm still, I don't like to be on the camera. Can but I did it for else? you because Emily loves you and she plays <coughs> over you. And like I said, I have a soft stop spot for drummers. And you're just a really cool guy and you're a fellow Kiss fan. So I figured oh, yeah. I could yeah. handle being on the camera for you. Well, Emily is amazing. And so I figured if Emily's amazing, that fruit probably fell close, you know, didn't fall far from the tree. So. I really appreciated you guys taking and, and you guys being in. And uh, um, we're going to be doing, we're not going to say which one it's going to be right now because I don't like to give too much away. But I'm going to have Emily and her mom back in the future for a panel video. They're going to be hosting, uh, co-hosting with me. And you guys will get to meet and talk to the Rick from It's All For You Demon uh, personally uh, when we do that. So cool. And Rick, you're not old. You're just levels of cool because you always say you're an old man but you're not an okay old man. wait rick and rick is 45 right yeah rick's younger than me okay if rick's 45 and he thinks he's old what does he think i am i'm 50 i'm gonna be 55 <laughs> this year rick uh, and i'll go ahead and speak for him rick has told me before because me and rick talk every day and rick's told me that uh he's a 45 year old man 
uh, with a uh, with a, a grandma stuck inside. Uh, he's a, he's a grandma at heart, uh, and he and he really truly is man. He is an old soul. He's one of those people. He's an old soul to be as young as he is, and he's a very unique uh, individual. And he brings me joy every day. So we have a good time. But um, yeah, so it'll be the four of us in a video together coming up real soon. So all right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here and. Emily and Sandy, thank you so much for coming and taking the time out of this afternoon, this evening to do this with me. Everybody, be sure to give Emily, go over and check her channel out and give her a subscription and support her and watch her videos and be on the lookout for that video from her because I'm sure i sure she'll be making one. And Sandy, I appreciate you guys, uh, you taking the time and let, letting us not only see your collection, but coming on also and talking about it. It's, it's been a lot of fun. Well, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. And you're yeah, such really a cool, cool guy. I, just, I love I your channel. And thank you very much. I didn't say it in the first video. <laughs> you're fine. <laughs> all right. All right, guys. That's it. That's, I'm Brant within my head channel. That's all we've got for today. I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.